Hi, I'm Miss Hall, and this is Lesson 76, Horizontal Translations of Sine and Cosine Functions. To review the core concept from yesterday, we're going to look at how each variable affects the transformation of a sine function. A is a vertical stretch or shrink, and that's going to affect the amplitude of our function. B is a vertical stretch or shrink, and that's going to affect the period. H is a horizontal shift, horizontal shift left or right, and K is a vertical shift. Example 4, graphing a horizontal translation. Graph g of x equals 5 cosine 1 half x minus 3 pi. So step one is to identify the amplitude, period, vertical shift, horizontal shift. Amplitude is the absolute value of A. A is 5, so the absolute value of 5 is 5. The period is 2 pi over B. B is 1 half, so it's 2 pi over 1 half which is really 2 pi times 2, the period is 4 pi. Horizontal shift is going to be 3 pi. So we're going to shift 3 pi units to the right, remember because it's minus h, and the vertical shift is 0. We're not going to draw a midline up or down, the x-axis is the midline. So I'm going to start to put the axes in. Okay, so we begin by step two is the midline. Draw the horizontal line, y equals k, which is the midline. Well, that's the x axis. I don't need to draw it. Now I need to find the five key points. And to find the five key points, I draw my parent function cosine of x at the values. 0, 90, 180, 270, 360. Okay, this will remind me how the cycle of cosine goes. I then sketch the unit circle. The first point is 1, 0, which is cosine sine, I'm looking at cosine. So it's 1, and I go to 90 degrees, the x value is 0, then negative 1, then 0, then 1. So what I see here is that my cosine cycle is it goes from the maximum to zero to the minimum to zero to the maximum. So those are the five key points. Now I've got to identify them for this particular function. Okay, so I have a horizontal shift of three pi. Let me start doing this is pi. 2 pi, 3 pi. Okay, so my period is going to begin at 3 pi. And it's 4 pi long is my period. So 4 pi, 5 pi, 6 pi. Oops. And we're going to call that 7 pi, because now it's 1, 2, 3, 4, 4 pi long. Okay, so I need the entire cycle contained uh, within those bars. And let's identify the minimum and maximum. I like to do that in the y axis, just make some notes to myself. That from the midline, the maximum point is 5 units up. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. Here's the max. The minimum is in five units down. One, two, three, four, five is the minimum at negative five. So cosine begins at the maximum. So here is my point. It also ends the period at the maximum. So I've taken care of those two. Uh, the middle 
of the two maximums is the minimum. So I'm going to go to the middle, which is 5 pi is the minimum, minimum which this is meant to be at negative 5. Check. And then in between the maximum and minimum, and the minimum and maximum, is the 0, uh, the x-intercept. So I'm going to go exactly halfway between. Doom, boom. Okay. Yeah, okay. It's going to be 4 pi here and 6 pi. And now I can connect these five points. Reflecting sine and cosine functions. To this point, we have only graphed sine and cosine functions where a is greater than 0 and b is greater than 0. What you're going to start to see now is what happens when a is less than 0, when there's a negative a value. And when there's a negative a value, the only thing that changes are five key points. We've got to think about the parent function y equals negative sine x or y equals negative cosine x uh, to help us identify our five key points. And remember, when there's a negative a value, it's a reflection across the x-axis. Example 5, graphing a reflection. Graph g of x equals negative 2 sine 2 thirds x minus pi over 2. Step 1 is the same. Amplitude is the absolute value of a, so the absolute value of negative 2 is 2. The period is 2 pi over b, 2 pi over our b value is 2 thirds. This is really 2 pi times 3 halves, and our period is 3 pi. Our horizontal shift is pi over 2, and our vertical shift is 0. I'm going to draw the axes. And now I've got to identify, well, first draw the midline, but the vertical shift is zero, so the midline is just the x-axis. Now I'm going to think of the five key points of my sine of x function. And I have to start with sine of x, and then I've got to remember that this is negative sine of x, so I'll negate all the x values. So the five key points of the sine of x are 0, 90, 180, 270. 360. In my unit circle, my anchor point 1, 0 is cosine sine. So sine starts at 0, goes to 1, 0, negative 1, 0. And for negative sine of x, I'll negate all the y's. So it's still 0, negative 1, 0, positive 1, 0. So this bottom row is what I'm focusing on. Now I've got those key points. Let's start labeling this graph. It has been a horizontal shift over uh, pi over 2. So let me label pi, 2 pi, 3 pi, 4 pi. The sh horizontal shift is pi over 2. That's where I'm going to start my period. The period is 3 pi, 1 pi, 2 pi, 3 pi. My horizontal, not my horizontal, my period is going to end there. The amplitude means that my maximum is going to be two points above the midline. So my maximum is going to be at two. My minimum is going to be two units below the midline. It's going to be at negative two. So sine, negative sine of x, or sine of x, starts and ends at zero. So my x-intercepts, or midline m-intercepts, I guess, if there's a vertical shift. And exactly halfway between is also a 0. So I'm going to go in between at 2 pi. Just count that as 1, 2, 3, 1, 2, 3. Good. And now in between the first two points is my minimum value, which is negative 2. And in between the last two intercepts, 
my maximum value is positive 2. And I will connect these points. And there is my graph of g of x.